been waiting to talk about these guys. Hi everybody, today I am taking a look at the Stabilo 88 Fine Liners, 30.88 Fine Liners. These are some of my favorite fine liners I've used, and this is a fresh pack. I've had some that I've used for years that I'm going to pass on to my daughter and start with a new pack so that I have something kind of fresh to work with for comparing fine liners in this month in June. I'm going to be taking a look at this pack now. I'm, I'm going to give you the upfront. I'm already biased towards these because I know I like them. Kind of like last week with the, st the Statlers where I knew that the barrel was not my thing, like these are some of my favorite fine liners so we're gonna just be talking about them from that perspective if you think cindy you're biased yeah yeah i am <laughs> this 30 pack which includes five neons is around 21 dollars at the time of the recording of this video on amazon originally these were the only colors this 30 pack was the only colors available in this style of pen they had other colors for other pens but they have recently bumped up their selection to a total of 47 stabilos I don't have those extra colors and um, on jet pens which is the only place I've seen them thus far they're sold out one day I would like to get them and have the complete collection but for right now I'm gonna go with the 30 now according to the Stabilo website these are Europe's number one fine liner and that their hexagonal stripe design is known all over the world I'm not in Europe I don't know if I could answer to that but I can tell you that I know exactly what fine liners these are as soon as I spot the orange barrel it is a hexagon shape which in and of itself could be uncomfortable for you if it's not the thing that works for you it seems to fit really well in my callus, which is why I like this particular fine liner over different shaped ones. I'm aware that that is personal preference. Mm. Now these caps, ugh, they're very difficult to get off, but they cap so satisfyingly, which as some of you know, is one of my pet peeves when it comes to fine liners. I like my caps to be solidly on. I do not like caps that feel like they can fall off. Although I will say, ugh, getting them off, especially at the beginning when they're new and you're still breaking them in, it can be a little bit of a, a hassle. Now, one of the things that I thought I might not like about these pens is because it's a weird shape, it might be hard to get the cap on the end without paying attention or the cap on the front without paying attention, but it's actually not difficult. Now, I know with some pens that have a different shape, like the Statler's where they're a triangle, you have to make sure to angle the pen correctly to get the cap on. But for both the top and the bottom of this pen, even though the barrel is hexagonal shape, the actual hole, like the way that the cap goes on is round. So you don't have to pay attention to how your cap is going on, which is a detail that may not matter a lot to some people. But to me, being able to cap it without thinking about it is a big fucking deal. Much like with the front of the pen, it's very securely on there. I'll compare these closer in detail when I do the big roundup at the end of the month. But the tip for both of these is metal encased, the Statler and the Stabilo, to keep it from getting squashed. And it says here that these also can be left without the cap on for a long time, just like the Statler. So what I'm gonna do is do the same thing. I'm gonna take this one. This is from my other set. I'm gonna write it down. This is immediate. I'm gonna leave the cap off and I'm gonna set it to the side. And then at the end of filming this video, I will write like 20 minutes because that's about how long these videos take to film. And then I will leave it all afternoon and I will write it again and you can see if it's not lying about having a long amount of time for it to have no cap on. Now the way these write, one of the things I like about the Stabilos is I feel like their tip is not as smushy as some of the other colorful fine liners I've used. When I wrote with the Statler, I killed one right away. Like I smushed it by pushing down hard. And here I'm pushing down super hard and the tip hasn't even moved. So they are nice and firm with even a heavy hand, something that I find very attractive as I tend to mush the shit out of my pens. Another thing that I like about these pens is that they have the color number on the side. So there's the 88, which indicates the the type of pen that it is. And then next to it is the number, which is 41 right here. So I'm gonna take a second and I am going to make a swatch page in my bullet journal next to the Statlers because I will be doing a more in-depth comparison of these to the Statlers to a couple of other colorful fine liner sets at the end of June. But for now, I just wanna get the colors written into my bullet journal.
will say I really love the color range of these. I feel like this set has a nice mixture, not too many of any given color. I feel like the biggest kind of overload here perhaps is the greens and that there could be like a reduction in greens to add maybe another like a wine red, which I know exists. I just don't have it in this pile. That's a quibble. Just glancing right now as a comparison, the neon Stabilos are not as vibrant as the neon Statlers. So that's a point to the Statlers. But again, we're not gonna be comparing these against each other until the end of June. When it comes to writing, these are super fucking comfortable. I was pressing down like white knuckly and none of the pens got squished. That's why these are some of my favorite fine liners because the tips can handle my fucking iron fist. Now to check out ghosting, there is a little bit of a ghost here, but no bleed through, nothing really intense. It's acceptable to me. These are absolutely planner friendly pens. Now we'll do a couple of other quick tests. We're gonna check and see how quickly they dry and whether or not they can stand up to water. They do not claim to be standing up to water. I think they're water-based pens, which means that they, they'd probably melt in water, but you never know. We might as well give it a shot, right? Well, that's smeared, but it barely smeared. These are actually pretty quick to dry, all things considered. Nope, I just, I figured I'd show you, but they did not claim to be water resistant. I don't know why I was expecting that. And finally, I'm gonna take, since it's been about 20 minutes since I started, I'm gonna write 20 minutes underneath this. Looks pretty good. I'm gonna insert some footage right now of me writing at the end of today to see if it still looks good after being left uncapped. But overall, I'm gonna give you my impressions of the Stabilos just as fine liners in and of themselves, not compared to anything else. I love Stabilos. As a heavy handed person, they are probably my favorite colorful fine liner set. They have a nice mixture of colors. They're not that expensive. The tips hold up. They hold up. Now the hexagonal barrel, some people may not like it. I like it. It works with my callus. And the big plus for me is that the cap is not hexagonal, so it can go right on without you having to pay attention to what you're doing. Out of all of the things I like, the color selection, the shape, blah, 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 the thing that I love about these pens is that they stand up to my heavy hand. Now you may have had a different experience with them, but I've used Stabilos for a couple of years now, and I've had no issues with the tips getting all smushed or like starting to like splay outwards or feather outwards. I've done really well with them. So there's something that I like. I wish the extra colors were easier to come across because I want to have all the colors. <laughs> and I can understand how some people might not like the hexagon barrel if it like grates on you or hurts your callus. But for me, these are a solid 10 out of 10. I would strongly recommend. So if you're looking for my opinion, that's that. But if you've tried them, let me know your experiences with them down in the comments below. And I would also love for you to recommend any other sets of colorful fine liners you'd like me to take a look at in advance of me comparing them all to each other at the end of June. And with that, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you next time.